ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मेति मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्त देहाय दक्षिणा मूर्त ये नम टुडे देर इज ए लॉड ऑफ साउंड बिकॉज ऑफ दीपावली हियर ऑल्सो एंड ऑल्सो मे बी इन युअर प्लेसेस देर फोर we will not go through the text today instead uh, since we have started the class already i will clarify certain points regarding what we have been discussing so far one question which i have to answer is the relation between mumukshutva and jignata mumukshutva means uh, desire for moksha moksho me bhuyaditi chha mumuksha me i have moksha i want to get moksha this desire is called mumukshutva mumukshutva is very important to be a student of vedanta because vedanta is meant for mumukshus whereas veda purva the karma kanda portion of the veda it is meant for both mumukshus and non mumukshus because karma kanda discusses karma reveals various types of karma these karmas are meant for two purposes one is abhyudaya another is nisheyasa karmas revealed in the karma kanda portion serve two purposes number 1 abhyudaya number 2 nisheyasa abhyudaya means material prosperity prosperity within this universe prosperity within samsara is called abhyudaya even the material prosperity is not limited to this life alone the modern people think material prosperity means being prosperous in this life being prosperous during this life span many people think so 
but the shastra says even the material prosperity even the abhyodaya is not limited to this life span alone even after this life span abhyodaya is possible and for that we can work during this life span during the present life we can work for the material prosperity after this life even that is abhyodaya for example after this life you can go to swarga and enjoy better comforts there enjoy better pleasure there even that is abhyodaya likewise you can even attain the status of hiranya garbha the greatest limit of abhyodaya the highest limit of abhyodaya is the position of hiranya garbha it is the greatest possible position in the scheme of srishti one can even work for the position of hiranya garbha even the position of hiranya garbha is included in abhyodaya therefore the karma kanda reveals the karmas that are meant for all types of abhyodaya abhyodaya in this world even the abhyodaya in this world has sadhanas karma kanda reveals sadhanas for abhyodaya in this world also means abhyodaya in this life span also if somebody has to become rich there are certain karmas if somebody wants to get better health even then there are karmas and then the abhyodaya in the life after this in the next janma like swargaadi loka prapti even swargaadi loka prapti involves another janma because you get another body there you do not go to swarga with the this body in fact this is the difference between hinduism and abrahamic religions according to abrahamic religions they don't have another janma abrahamic religions do not believe in another janma another birth but they believe in a life after death there is after life but there is no rebirth whereas our shastras clearly say that there is a rebirth 
our after life is in the form of rebirth this is a difference i hope you understand the difference is it understood or should i explain it further understood yeah so abhyudaya requires a certain type of karma certain type of sadhanas and those sadhanas are revealed by the vedanta sorry not the vedanta veda purva karma kanda likewise the same karma kandas reveal karmas that are meant for nisheyasa nisheyasa means moksha another word for moksha is nisheyasa there are karmas that lead to nisheyasa but here there is a difference the karmas can lead to abhyudaya directly karmas become sadhana of abhyudaya directly but the karmas do not become sadhana for abhyudaya sorry the karmas do not become sadhana for nisheyasa directly because the direct means for nisheyasa is only jnana jnana devatu kaivalyam jnatva devam uchyate sarva paashaihi jnana is the only direct means for nisheyasa therefore no karma can become a means for nisheyasa directly then how does karma serve in the pursuit of nisheyasa how does karma serve the purpose of moksha as an answer to this question we find a statement in brahadaranyakopanishad tametam vedanuvachanena brahmana vividishanti yajnena danena tapasana shakena this statement is uh, a very important one in vedanta because this statement gives the role of karma in the pursuit of moksha समेत वेदाचन ब्राह्मण विविदिशति यपसाशकन द स्टेटमेंट टाक्स अबौट वेरियस् टाइप्स ऑफ कर्मा एस साधन वेदाचन वेदाचन is one type of karma chanting the vedas chanting of the vedas vedadhyayana is a type of karma and then yajna yajna is another type of karma 
yajna involves all forms of uh, sacrifices all forms of worships yaja deva puja sangati karana daneshu deva puja worship of the devatas and also worship of the pitras pitra yajna likewise other yajnas they talk about panchamaha yajna adhyapanam brahma yajna pitra yajnastu tarpanam homo daivam balirbhautam nrayajnyotithi poojanam these are the five types of yajnas adhyapanam brahma yajna one type of yajna is brahma yajna brahma yajna is in the form of adhyapanam teaching the shastra teaching the shastra is called brahma yajna some people may teach by on their own if they know the shastra properly everyone cannot teach but they can support those people who are teaching the shastra through some type of contributions even then it is brahma yajna अध्यापनम ब्रह्मयज्ञ पितृयज्ञस्तु तर्पणम पितृयज्ञ ईस इन द फॉर्म ऑफ तर्पणम श्राद्धा एंड तर्पण ईस पितृयज्ञ एंड होमो दैवम daiva yajna is in the form of homa offering oblations to the devatas in the sacred fire and as a substitute of the fire offering the fire sacrifice home we have other modes of worship even performing the puja at home or in temple can also serve as deva yajna balir bhautam offering bali to the other beings like a cow etc bali means offering food to cow etc is bhuta yajna and then nrayajnyotithi poojanam nrayajnyah manushya yajna is atithi poojanam worshipping the atithi worshipping a guest atithi has no proper translation guest is not a proper translation atithi is any visitor who might as well come without prior intimation and he may be a needy person also 
because in olden days people would travel from one place to another place on foot etc and then they needed needed food in between there were no restaurants so they had to knock at somebody's door and there was no provision to no facility to inform them in advance no mobile phone therefore they have to go unexpectedly there is no other way therefore any unexpected visitor who is in need of food etc used to be atithis therefore atithi can be understood as any needy person atithi poojanam worshipping the atithi is called manushya yajna all that we do for other needy human beings so yajna and dana giving charity again the word charity does not form a proper translation of dana still roughly it's okay charity i'm not getting into the details now we will discuss the details at some other context and tapas various types of tapas yajna dana and tapas these are the karmas mentioned in the statement that i quoted from brahadaranya kopanishad these karmas are elaborately revealed in karma kanda portion of the vedas now the the statement the statement explains what is the purpose of these karmas vividishanti there is a word vividishanti tametam vedanu vachanena vividishanti vividishanti means they desire to know this is the literal translation of vividishanti some acharyas describe the word vividishanti the word vividisha has the same meaning as that of jignasa jignasa and vividisha are same desire to know desire to know desire for knowledge is called vividisha
for example hunger is called bubhuksha in sanskrit hunger is called bubhuksha bhoktum ichcha bubhuksha the desire to eat is called bubhuksha desire to eat no somebody wants to get better health he is a lean and weak person and this lean and weak person wants to become healthier he wants to put up some weight in order to put up weight he has a desire to eat food because people tell him you should eat well therefore he knows if he has to put up weight he has to eat food properly instead of eating two idlis he has to eat six idlis but then there is a problem he knows he has to eat six idlis but there is no appetite he is lacking in appetite therefore he goes to the doctor and the doctor gives him a medicine and the medicine is an appetizer a medicine to increase appetite and once he starts taking the appetizer he becomes hungry and then he can eat well digest well the appetizer gives him the ability to eat well as well as digest well otherwise just eating will cause indigestion problem food will stay in the stomach without getting digested without getting assimilated it will be another problem so he should eat well and he should digest well that kind of medicine is needed now let us understand with this example there are some people who want to get moksha at least some desire for moksha is there because they know some swami has told them moksha is parama purushartha moksha is the ultimate purushartha because you get absolute happiness in moksha you get absolute fulfillment in moksha therefore moksha is parama purushartha they have heard this since they have heard this they know that they have to get moksha the goal of life is moksha this much they know therefore they got some interest in moksha they got some interest in moksha 
on account of their intellectual understanding intellectual conviction that moksha is the ultimate goal but despite understanding this they have many other desires many other desires are there i want to become prime minister i want to become a doctor i want to go to america and settle there so many desires are there in the mind when so many desires are there in the mind the desire for moksha cannot gain strength in the mind desire for moksha cannot get strength in the mind therefore the desire for moksha is there at a corner of the mind a very feeble desire overpowered by many other desires like a plant surrounded by many weeds and the weeds are not allowing this plant to grow they are not allowing this plant plant to widen its base such a mumukshatva a mumukshatva which is overpowered by many other desires is called manda mumukshatva manda mumukshatva very dull mumukshatva it is there but it is not strong when the mumukshatva is weak the person will not have an intense thirst for atmajnana here we have to note moksha and jnana moksha is the sadhya the goal and jnana is the sadhana the means if i have a desire for moksha it should be supported by the desire for jnana if i have a desire for moksha but i do not have a desire for jnana then i am in trouble it is like a person who wants to who wants to pass ias exam somebody wants to pass ias exam but he is not interested in studying he has a desire to become an ias officer but he is not interested in studying what will happen he will have the desire for becoming ias and he will be disappointed because he is not ready to study he will never be able to reach his goal therefore desire for any goal should be accompanied by love for its means 
only then the goal can be achieved if i want to become an ias officer i should have love for studying also i should have the liking to prepare for the exam therefore sadhya ichha means a desire for the goal should be accompanied by desire for the means and the same thing is applicable between moksha and jnana also desire for moksha is called mumukshutva if i have mumukshutva i should have jignasa desire for jnana love for jnana also i have love for moksha i want moksha but i do not have interest in jnana i do not have jignasa then i am in problem because until i have jignasa i will not be able to pursue the knowledge as long as i will not be able to pursue the knowledge i will not be able to get the knowledge without jignasa jnana is not possible and if jnana is not possible moksha is not possible it is just like if i do not have hunger i cannot eat if i cannot eat i am not going to become healthy therefore even if i have mumukshutva that mumukshutva will be a waste if i have not cultivated jignasa therefore we should cultivate an intense desire for jnana an intense thirst for jnana in order to cultivate the intense thirst for jnana the mind has to be satvika because satvat sanjayate jnanam jnana as well as the desire for jnana even the desire for jnana can exist only in a satvika mind a satvika mind seeks jnana it will be thirsty for jnana therefore in order to cultivate a jignasa one should purify the mind satvik mind means uh, a purified mind how to purify the mind the karmas revealed in the karma kanda serve as the means to purify the mind therefore by performing the actions that are revealed by the karma kanda yajna dana tapas etc the mind becomes pure mind is pure means it is not overpowered by other desires all other desires 
desire for anything other than moksha and jnana are like weeds in the mind performance of the karma weeds out all other desires desire for material enjoyment in this world desire for becoming something in this world i want to become a prime minister etc or i want to become a famous person etc all such desires are mitigated by performance of karma yajnadi karma and then the desire for moksha becomes a strong in the mind mumukshatva becomes a strong in the mind it is like when the weeds are removed the plant will grow because the plant gets all the nourishment the nourishment provided to the plant are not carried away by the weeds they are not stolen by the weeds therefore the plant gets enough nourishment therefore it will grow strong when the weeds are removed in the same manner when other desires are gone desire for moksha which is called mumukshatva becomes a prabala in the mind becomes a strong in the mind and then it is called prabala mumukshatva or tivra mumukshatva i want only moksha i do not want anything but moksha all other priorities become subservient to moksha then it is prabala mumukshatva and when there is prabala mumukshatva even jignasa follows the person gets intense thirst for knowledge until then he may have just a curiosity many people come to vedanta out of curiosity but the curiosity is not sustainable after listening to one or two youtube videos curiosity is uh, quieter i understood what vedanta has to say one youtube video is enough such people do not listen to me much because there are other popular youtube videos for curiosity a casual understanding of vedanta is enough they will not pursue further they will not pursue with the commitment with the dedication but when there is a intense thirst for jnana then it is called jignasa 
then we can say the person has become a jignasu one becomes a jignasu a true jignasu only when he has prabala mumukshitva only when he has strong mumukshitva mumukshitva is directly proportional to jignasutva if there is a strong desire for moksha there will be a strong desire for atma jnana also and when there is a strong desire for jnana when there is a strong jignasa one is able to receive the jnana as well as digest the jnana just like in the example only when there is strong appetite one is able to eat food as well as digest the food in the same manner when there is a prabala jignasa prabala mumukshutva followed by prabala jignasa then he will be able to receive the jnana in fact only then he will pursue jnana properly at any cost otherwise even if you call him for any vedanta session after one or two days he will say i have this party this time that tv serial is there he will have so many excuses such people do not uh, remain committed because they may have a casual curiosity whereas when there is a strong jignasa one listens to the upadesha properly with the commitment and he is also able to digest assimilate the teaching even the assimilation requires prabala jignasa ಪೂರ್ನಮಿದೂರ್ನಾಪೂರ್ನಮುದ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ ಶಾಂತಿ ಶಾಂತಿ